Hello, everybody. Welcome to Spiral Dynamics Integral Live. Today, we're going to be sharing some blue stories, that is, periods of our life where we have lived uh, something akin to being within a more dogmatic religious structure, uh, whether we were born into it or we were practicing our religious practitioner for a period of time. Uh, it may have, been, may have been a very positive experience, may have been a negative experience or a combination of both. And what we're curious to learn today is what transitioned us out of that, um, th that worldview and um, what have we integrated from that period and what have we transcended. And with that, we're going to hear from Nish Dubashi, Dubashia. Okay, hello, thank you. Thank you, Veronica, for inviting me to this, um, to this discussion. So I'll give a very brief sort of five to seven minute summary of my experience with what in spiral dynamics we would call the blue level of development. So I'll go back to when I was very young. I was uh, aged four and um, I was living in India at that time where I originally come from. And my grandfather introduced me to Hindu mythology, which I became absorbed in. Um, all the stories of the gods and the goddesses. I just became completely obsessed with that as a young child, just a magical world into which I could uh, absorb myself. Um, it also gave me a way to escape from the family situation because the family situation, there are a lot of arguments and difficulties going on with the family. So it gave me a world into which to lose myself. Um, but the real shift came, and, and what I've just described, I would describe that as maybe the sort of red, high red level in spiral dynamics, the, the power gods. Um, but what happened when I was age six is that my younger brother died. And at the age of six, that was obviously very traumatic. And I was constantly asking, going around the family, asking everybody to give me some kind of explanation for where he is, where, where has he gone? Why isn't he around? And nobody could give me any good explanation. Some people would say, well, he's gone to be with God. He's disappeared. He'll, he'll come back again. Um, and we moved to the UK soon after that. And I became best friends at the age of six now uh, in school with a chap called Barry, who was my best friend for several years. And he started to tell me that um, if I worship the right God, the correct God, the one true God, which according to him was the God of the Bible and specifically the God that he called Jehovah because he was a Jehovah's Witness, then I would be able to see my brother again because we would all be resurrected in a paradise on earth and I could be reunited with my brother. And at the age of six, this was obviously compelling. And it was the first time anybody had given me some kind of explanation or hope for seeing my younger brother again. So from the age of seven, pretty much until the age of 18, 11 years, I believed in and studied and as far as I could practiced the Jehovah's Witness faith. Most of this was without my parents' knowledge because they were violently opposed to this. For different reasons. My mum saw it as a disloyalty to our family religion, which was Hinduism. My dad was a very orange, um, rational humanist, so he thought all religions are nonsense, so obviously this wasn't going to work. Um, and when I was 17, I came out very strongly to them, and this led to enormous conflict with my parents. They basically said, we'll throw you out of the house. We won't pay for you to go to university. You're on the streets if you follow this religion. Um, and then obviously, in retrospect, now I can see that acted as a, almost as an evolutionary pressure to, um, to question this faith and see if that really was how I was able to see things at that age. And the real shift came when I was about to go to university, actually, uh, a few weeks before in the summer holidays. And I walked into a library in Gravesend and picked up quite by random, if these things are random, a book by a guy called Ted Dencher. And the name of the book was Why I Left the Jehovah's Witnesses. And he was a, 
obviously a Jehovah's Witness who left, and he, he wrote a book about it, explaining all the reasons why he left. Basically, they fell into two categories. There were the there was the theological reasons. So he was giving all kinds of Bible quotes. And I still believed in the Bible at that point, but showing why the Jehovah's Witness beliefs don't really follow the Bible. And the second reason, which I found far more disturbing at the age of 18, was he exposed what he saw as the hypocrisies and the double standards in that religion and the what he saw as the prevalence of child abuse in that religion. And literally during that one afternoon, six or seven hours I was in the library and I, I, I read the whole book in one sitting. My beliefs of 11 years pretty much just fell away in one afternoon, one evening. And pretty much by the time I got home that evening on the bus, I was already starting to see the world with new eyes. Um, these beliefs I'd held on to for 11 years, this, this fear that God was going to destroy me if I didn't believe the right things, those kind of fears just fell away. And I started to see the world now in, in a day as this place of exciting opportunities where I could learn things and explore things and question things. It was almost an overnight transformation, although obviously in retrospect, I can see I was primed for it over a period of time. And far from traumatic, far from leaving being experienced as a trauma, I experienced it more as a relief. I didn't have to believe all these rigid beliefs anymore. I didn't have to follow all these rigid moral structures anymore. And um, I immediately started reading rational thinkers like Bertrand Russell, Krishnamurti. So to, um, to conclude, yeah, the, the benefits for me of, of leaving that very blue, even mean blue cult was that it gave me a vision of the world that was full of opportunities. Um, but what I've been able to include, I think, transcend and include, is I still maintained a passion to know the truth. I still maintained a certain degree of self-discipline that I think that religion gives you. And I still maintained some kind of love of humanity and a hope that humanity can be saved from its um, self-destructive ways. So that's very briefly my, my blue story.